Coming up on Hands On Tech, let's take a look at some suggestions for a cross-platform password manager once you've made the switch to a new machine. Stay tuned. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to Hands On Tech. I'm Micah Sargent, and as is always my way, I am taking your tech questions and answering them here on Hands On Tech. Uh, The question this week comes in from Jim, who writes in with the following. Now that I have my new Mac, it's time for a new and better password manager. I was still using LastPass on my PC. Yeah, I know you and Leo urged us to switch after LastPass had been hacked, but I never got around to it. Now is finally the time. I, and I bet most people, need one that works across platforms. In my case, I want it to work seamlessly on my Mac, iPad, iPhone, and my wife's iPhone. If my wife wants to check our bank statement on her iPhone, she shouldn't have to wonder what the password is just because I created it on the Mac. And no way can anyone correctly hand enter one of those long, ugly, complicated, strong passwords that password managers love to create. Bonus points if the password manager can work with Roku, so a Netflix password created on my iPad will automatically log me into Netflix on my TV. So let me talk about some password manager options. I, for years now, um, probably since like 2011, maybe, uh, at least since 2011, I think, uh, have been using 1Password. 1Password has been a sponsor on the network. uh, So just putting that out there. It's uh, $36 a year for families, I think is the current pricing. And so that's a really good price. Uh, It works across Mac. It works with iOS. And we'll talk about how it can work with Roku as well. Um, I think one of the best things about it is the family sharing portion of it. Once it's set up on uh, your wife's phone, it's very easy to use on iOS. Uh, It will kick up those passwords as are needed in the background. And the this is the way that it would work with Roku. The app just like any third-party password manager that has this functionality built in, will suggest the password on Roku's mobile app, which can then forward those credentials along to the television where the Roku is installed. Uh, Very, very strong security. Uh, As far as we know, never meaningfully breached. And it has um, a really nice set of tools built in to help you migrate from LastPass specifically. So a little bit more expensive um, than free uh, and a little bit more expensive than the next option, uh, which is Bitwarden. And they, of course, have also been a sponsor on the network, uh, free for basic use. And it works on and with everything that you mentioned. It does have family sharing options available. It is an open source Uh, password manager. And so that has its uh, positive implications as well. And again, it works on iOS in the same way with those integrations of allowing uh, you to put in your password in the Roku mobile app and then have that be forwarded along to the television where the Roku is plugged in and also has a nice import feature from LastPass. That said... I also want to mention that you've got a free option built in. Apple has its Passwords app that uses iCloud Keychain to sync between your different devices. With the Passwords app, you can share passwords with other people. Um, It works across all of your Apple devices in the same way that these third-party options work in terms of working specifically on Apple platforms. If you are ever stepping out of Apple platforms, that's where things aren't going to be as uh, easy and clean. You can download um, uh, an app from Apple in Android in the Google Play Store that will work. And you can also download an app from Apple for Windows that will work with your passwords. But it's not as clean and slick as uh, being able to use Apple passwords across all of your Apple stuff. So if you are Jim, are a complete Apple household, then 
I think you could probably get away with just using Apple passwords. For one thing, I found that it's very easy for um, less technical users given that it will automatically suggest to save passwords and has that built-in functionality of just kind of running in the background and saying, okay, this is an account you're trying to log into. Are you ready to log in? Face ID or you know, touch or type in your pin, whatever. It just kind of works and that's helpful. And what you would do, uh, Jim, is you would create a group, is what it's called, and we'll, we have a link in the show notes that talks about this, um, a group and you would add your wife to that group, and then you would share specific passwords from your passwords to that group, and that group will include your wife. And so on her device, then she would get suggestions for being able to uh, connect as well. Now, in this, you would probably have to... As long as you're using the Roku app, then once again, you should be able to get that suggestion and have it be forwarded along to the um, to the Roku device. So bear in mind that Roku itself obviously doesn't support browser extensions. You know, it's not a, it's not a traditional browser <laughs> in any means, the device itself. And so you're not going to be able to just install one password on Roku or install Bitwarden on Roku. But again, those mobile apps are what make it easy to just copy and paste those passwords and then send those credentials to your Roku connected to your television. Um, I think that the family sharing options and the cross-platform, meaning Linux, Android, uh, Windows, Mac, usability of 1Password make it my choice. Having used it for so many years now and not having had, a, had issues with it, that's, that's why I, I recommend it. It does cost more than Bitwarden. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. The thing that I would suggest to you, Jim, more than anything else is don't force your wife or anyone else to try out multiple options. That is going to make someone <laughs> not want to participate in uh, password management at all. Uh, that's been my experience at least. Provide the least amount of friction as possible for someone who is not interested in digging into the techie stuff by doing that hard work yourself. So if you want to see if Bitwarden is good enough, if you want to see if 1Password is the one you want to go with, if you want to see if Apple Passwords is good enough, try to do as much of that testing yourself first. And then when it's time, you can very easily help your wife set up that password autofill and everything if you're using Apple passwords or if you're deciding to go with one password. And that way it's not like, okay, we're going to try this password manager, download this, and then uh, you got to go in here and you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this. And then, oh no, uh, it's it, this doesn't work. Uh, let's You're going to get a new email and it's going to be coming from this instead. No, don't do that. <laughs> Figure out which one you want to go with and then go from there. I very much a 1Password user, have been for years, highly recommend it, think it's great. That's my suggestion. So, Jim, thank you for writing in. I am very curious to hear what solution you end up going with, so please let me know. HOT at twit.tv is how you get in touch with me, and I can't wait to hear from you. Everyone, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Hands on Tech. I'll be back next week for our final episode of August. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twit your tech hub for intelligent, thoughtful conversations. If you want to take your experience to the next level and support what we do here at Twit, say goodbye to ads and say hello to Club Twit. With Club Twit, you unlock all our shows ad-free. You also get exclusive members-only content. We do a lot of great programming just for the club members. You also get behind-the-scenes access with our Twit Plus bonus feed and live video streams while we're recording. And don't forget the fantastic members-only Discord. It's where passionate tech fans like you and me hang out, swap ideas, and connect directly with all of our hosts. It's my favorite social network. I think you'll like it too. Club Twit. It's not just a subscription. It's how you support what we do. 
and become part of the Twit family. Your membership directly supports the network, helping us stay independent and keep making the shows you love. If you're ready to upgrade your tech podcast experience, head to twit.tv slash club twit and join us today. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in the club.